well, well, you know something, what's timely about this is that if you think about the elections and just the comments that have been made on the national scale over the past year, there really is a need for local government, uh, particularly federal government, to engage with the, you know, with the people. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, and you can see here, we refer to this as democracy's you know, new, uh, you know, lubricant. And what that essentially means is that we need, a, we need to find a way to be able to engage the public in decision making. And we're going to talk about how that should work. One of the things that we've learned about in this group as well is the whole notion of weak signals. Rick Meyer talked to us about that a couple of years ago. And one of the skills that we all need, as well as leaders in, in the future, will be to develop those weak, I guess, understanding of those weak signals. And for those of you that participated in the National Capacity Building training, that's one of the components. And of course, weak signals are those uh, notions, those ideas, those inventions, the, you know, the different way of thinking that is not quite a trend, but can have an impact in our communities over the next, next uh, three to five years. And so that's one of the skills that we're uh, saying that our future leaders need, particularly our, you know, the elected officials. And again, whether it's on a local level, state level, or even a federal level, the ability to figure out what kind of impact uh, your community will face in years due to, due to changing circumstances is something that those leaders you know, definitely need. I want to give you some examples of weak signals. And if, you, if you've, you've not gotten onto the site, the, the World Future Society has a pretty exciting site. And they talk about a lot of those trends and weak signals and so forth. And I want to give you some examples. And particularly as we're talking about businesses that are innovative and talking about uh, what impact they may have on our economy, being able to think down the road in terms of the future and what some weak signals are are pretty important. Now, one example is the whole notion of water. Think about a world in which water becomes a new oil. And you can see here by, by 2040, at least 3.5 billion people could run short of water. And this is almost 10 times as many as 1995. And so this is really an emerging business for those firms that can, can work in uh, actually converting you know, salt water to fresh water. Those firms that are involved in water conservation is very important. And of course, if you think about our businesses, Nathan knows that a lot of our businesses are water intensive in terms of uh, the resources that they use. And so that's going to be very valuable for us in the future, making sure that we've got an adequate uh, you know, water supply for our communities across the country as we look to develop our economies. So that's going to be very important. Another example of a weak signal is artificial intelligence. Think about a world in which, uh, and we've heard about this over the past couple of weeks, a world in which uh, computers will be able to navigate cars. Uh, we've got that with GPS. But to do that without a driver in the seat, and we know that, I believe it's Honda. Mercedes, don't they, when you put the car in reverse, it's basically helping you drive yeah. the car in. There's a commercial about it. Yeah. But that's something that we know will happen at some point in the future, as well as in the medical field. The ability of artificial intelligence to play a role in diagnosing diseases is going to be something that, uh, again, is a good business opportunity, but also a weak signal that as a community, we need to be thinking about what kind of impact that weak signal will have on business opportunities for us. Another example, and I know this group has talked about this, is WiMAX. And again, this is from the World Future Society site. And think about a place where, uh, about a future where folks can have access to, uh, you know, to the internet, wireless internet, anywhere they are. And uh, we've talked a lot about, uh, about hotspots, uh, the role of, of technology in making sure that we develop our economy. But certainly those communities that get out in front of this, this is a weak signal in terms of a need. That's going to be very important in the way that we develop our economy. We also need to be thinking about the people. And if you think about, uh, think about millennials, we do have an older generation that's uh, developing in our country. They'll have special needs, uh, particularly around the area of public health and medical support. But it's also said that the millennial, the, uh, millennial uh, generation, those are the folks that are born between 1982 and 98, will have a major impact on the society as well. And uh, it said that they'll exhibit some of the uh, qualities of earlier generations, but certainly whether it's a Generation X, a Y, you know, baby boomer, just getting a sense of what they need in terms of, uh, uh, you know, just over the next several years is a weak signal uh, as, as well. Another example of a weak signal is the role of the consumer. 
and certainly we all buy products. Uh, the companies that are on that list actually sell products or provide services. But, but being able to engage your customers in developing your products, we'll see more of that in the future as well. And some companies are actually doing that. And so that's referred to as being a prosumer. You're involved in the product end, but you're also involved in the consumering end as well. The other one that's really interesting to us in local government is the, uh, uh, as well as the federal government, is the aging population. And certainly with these advanced, I guess the advances in medical technology, folks will be living longer. And so what does that mean in terms of the way that we develop parks, we develop our infrastructure and communities? Getting a handle on that is going to be very important as well, in terms of, in terms of service delivery, in terms of the products of that those consumers will Nobody, Nobody's going to die, is that what <laughs> well, Go we every say, year, you live a year longer. At, at, at least no one in this room, <laughs> because we're, we're uh, the future economy. But certainly that's a big issue for us. Now one of the things I'd like to uh, draw your attention to is this quote. Take a look at that and tell me what you think about that quote. What does that mean to you? Any comments? <coughs> Could have been written yesterday. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And had problems. Same mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if, if you look at the phrase there, um, and if we think they're not enlightened enough to exercise their control with the hopes of discretion, mm -hmm. the remedy is not to take it from them, but to inform them of their discretion. It goes back to the Declaration of Independence, then that's what you wrote. <laughs> That's right, the founding of this country. And as Bill said, this could have been written last week or it could have been written yesterday. The fact of the matter is that uh, it's, it's our belief that the founders, when they established this country, they really thought that democracy may have to be tweaked at some point. And, uh, but if it were to be tweaked, uh, that the people uh, should be able to have uh, the sovereign right to, to uh, dictate their future. And so as we think about the election and some of the you know, the discussion that we've heard over the past several months, this really uh, rings true to me in terms of the role of government in interacting with the people. It means that we need to be more engaged in uh, whether you're at the local level or, uh, or a higher level, but also to use technology for that engagement. And so our, again, our thought with uh, the founders is that uh, as we talk about mobile governance and, and uh, new ways of getting folks not just involved in decision making, but controlling decision making, that uh, that's in keeping with what the founders have envisioned for our country. Well, I mean, it's a lot like Star Wars. You have the Empire and you have the Republic. And the Empire wants to control the people and the Republic wants to give power to the individual. And, I mean, that's exactly, you know, what this all, there's been a constant fight through history that envelops that whole philosophy of, of whether the state should control the people or whether the people should control the state. That's right. You put that hood up and you look a lot like Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> I have some yeah. characteristics there, believe me. So the point here again is, is, is that as we think about democracy, as we think about mobile governance, the impact of generational change and also the impact of uh, a more enlightened people because of that technology and their access to information, we do need to make sure that they're involved in decision making, but where possible, controlling decisions as well. If you've not read this book, this is a really good book by Larry Grossman, and uh, Rick Smyer and I have talked about getting him involved in the mobile governance process as well, and Rick has had some dealings with Larry over the years. Larry is actually the uh, former uh, president of NBC News, so you've probably heard that name before, Larry's rule in that effort, and then also the former president of National Public Radio, so he's been involved in NPR as well. You can see here that he's what he mentioned years ago when this book was written, that technological changes are transforming our political system, they're creating a new electronic republic, a hybrid form that adds elements of, the, of, of direct electronic democracy to America's two-year-old hundred system. And so, uh, again, these are some things that uh, and I'll give you some other examples as well. Uh, but people that think about the future like we do recognize that government has an opportunity to fundamentally change. Another example of uh, commentary is by John Peterson. And John Peterson is actually a futurist. And he's with, a, uh, uh, with the uh, 
a firm in Washington, D.C. I'll take a look at my notes there. But essentially what he's saying is that complex issues challenge the ability of our representative systems of government to even function with moderate effectiveness, and that new forms of <coughs> governance will, will emerge. And so what, uh, what he's done actually, and he is with the, uh, he is with the, uh, he's the founder of the Arlington Institute in Washington, D.C. They look at global changes in terms of uh, economies. They also look at uh, natural resource changes, climate changes. And the thinking of, of John Peterson, as well as others, is that as, as we approach 2012 and beyond, we'll be seeing some seismic changes and expectations on the part of the public, but also institutions, whether they be businesses or local governments, state or federal governments, and meeting those needs. And so the point here is that there are some folks that have recognized that uh, these changes that we talked about in this group will have an impact on all of us in terms of the way that we do business. So why do we need global governance? Well, we've talked about this before, um, just within this uh, you know, group as well as others, is that in a lot of places there's a lack of trust in the representative system. And again, if you think about the elections, uh, discussions over the past several months, that's been mentioned as well. And so mobile governance, we feel, is a way to address that lack of trust by giving folks information so that they can uh, be involved in decision making. Also, checks and balances are out of step with pace and the complexity of society. And this is more pronounced in, um, of course, in some larger urban areas, uh, and it varies across the country. But I think none of us would argue that uh, uh, with the point that there is a need for improvement in terms of the way that we govern. <clears throat> also, there are opportunities for deeper collaboration. That's one of the things that we recognize as part of the Future Economy Council, that we do have an opportunity to uh, collaborate with others so that we can achieve our mission more efficiently, but also to draw on experiences of other entities in solving problems at the local level. There's also an opportunity for a new kind of citizen engagement. Again, that's based on uh, technology. I know in Catawba County, Kerry, has really led us in, um, in Lee Worsley, our other assistant manager. We've done a lot in terms of developing our Facebook site and, uh, and, and making sure that we can get information to the public about what county government is doing. We use Flickr. Terry mentioned to me that we had many pictures of the tornado up on Flickr, for example. We also use uh, Twitter, but uh, that really speaks to, again, a new kind of citizen engagement. And, and not just pushing information out to the public, but also receiving information as well. Okay, so let's dive into the concept of mobile governance. It's really a new approach to adaptive, adaptive governance. And I know that as we've, uh, Rick uh, talked to us early on about the differences between, a, between adaptive planning and strategic planning, and adaptive planning really recognizes that uh, you don't necessarily know what the future holds, so that you need to be flexible. You make changes in course depending on new information which differs from the uh, traditional type of planning in terms of, of uh, you know, strategic planning, where you might know what your resources are and, and what kind of impact they'll have on you in the future. What we're really saying is that, uh, is that there are so many unknowns, we need to be adaptive as we plan, and that mobile governance, at least in terms of governing, will make sure that we're more adaptive. Also, that uh, the concept is that citizens identify emerging issues and, and, and also facilitate the decision-making process. The leader is a master capacity builder. You all are aware of that. But again, the, the, it's very important for those leaders to be able to recognize weak signals. Again, those, those notions, those thoughts, those inventions that are not trends, but can have an impact on our local economies and, and communities over the next three to five years. And also mobile technologies, and we'll get into that a little bit here. 